Hit it. Oh, how you feel, brother? Feeling good. You feel good? Feeling good. It's through. so much bone, brother. How you feel, man? I feel all right. I call your name. I don't want no people to know you're in here. How you feel, fella? Hey, yeah. Sure getting down. with Sharita J. If we could get more people to collaborate with our nonprofits, we could be bringing a lot more programs back to our schools because there's grants where there's been a music program or an arts program or fine language program cut. There's grants where individuals can bring those programs into the schools and collaborate. So that's why I never shut up about this. And see? Hi, this is Sharita J, and it is drive time here in L.A. From You've got me from 5 to 6 p.m. If it's mountain time, of course, that's 6 to 7. Central is 7 to 8. And you on the East Coast and all of that snow is 9 p.m. But either way, you have me for an hour. And I'm going to be able to answer questions and discuss how is there funding for the entertainment industry? Is there grants for film projects and documentaries? Or can you get funding for pre and post production. We're going to be talking about that today. There's even ways for you to get paid to have individuals that are working with you and they can be production assistants and it can be a production assistance program. So if that's not your arena, what you want to do is call any and everybody that you know that's in that arena, have them tune in today, tell them to go to rmconair.com because though you're watching, they won't know where you're watching so that they can find out what's going on with this show today. You know, I was panicking because my very special guest, I was so excited that Babu, who is the founder, he is the founder of the Pan-African Film Festival, he was going to be with me today. And about four o'clock, he and I were on the phone and he said, Sharita, I won't be able to be there today. And I was like, ah, oh, no, not that. You know, and I was sitting there, you know, at this wonderful restaurant right here, the Brownstone Bistro, and I said, what am I going to do? And I was panicking, but you know what? Ever since I was a little girl, you know, I'm a preacher's girl, also a preacher's <laughs> daughter, and dad would always say, you know, Shub, my nickname is Shub, he said, sometimes you just gotta call his name. You don't even have anything to say. You, you just gotta say his name. And as I was sitting there, I said, okay, Lord, you're gonna give me something. You know, I was going to talk about grants and the entertainment industry and talk to Babu about what's going on with the Pan-African Film Festival and all of what it's done. And I said, so you're going to give me something. And then lo and behold, I have a very special guest sitting here in the studio, someone that I, I haven't seen him for a while. He's an amazing young man and I know his child. And then also my engineer, Leron. I have never even thought about having him on the show. And when I walked in today, I see Carlos Martin, who you're going to meet in a moment. And I'm like, I grab him and I'm hugging him. And I'm like, what are you doing here? And he was on the previous show and I didn't know he was here going into the entertainment industry. I knew that that's what he did. And then Leron, who has his own show, is in the industry. And I'm just like, Lord, you just work things out. And he's like, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking the Lord is saying, you're going to know one day that I'm the man. I don't know why you keep doubting me. I got you. I got you. So anyway... This is Sharita J, and I want to thank you for tuning in. I want to introduce you first. I want to go to my engineer because he supports me every show. He's absolutely phenomenal. He's a young man that, you know, how I keep telling individuals, you know, work with our young people because they are our tomorrow. And you really have to, you really have to take that on and know that. And so, Laurent, do you have a camera there? <laughs> You're looking at one. All righty, all righty. <laughs> you know what, you, I, I just want to thank you. Matter of fact, today uh, is something how all this worked out. I kept forgetting your Christmas gift. <laughs> <laughs> it was in my other car. Know. And I'm like, okay. And so today I made sure I brought it. And you can use it. I'm so, I'm so grateful. But um, before I go to Carlos, tell us what you do because you have a show here. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am Laron Pierce, Laron DeVistin, you know, um, the executioner, the lone wolf himself, the RFC's engineer, RFC's executioner, whatever. Um, I do recording music. I am an artist myself, recording artist. I do mixing and mastering as a en recording engineer. Um, I'm a radio engineer. I got a, I'm a radio personnel now, so for two years now, so I have my own show, which is the only hip hop show. Last night we had. Um, with the only hip hop squad, we had a um, special guest, um, three individuals, um, better off young, sp uh, spelled out boy. So we had them on on the show last that, night. That's it was a great. nice name. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Okay, and and so better off young, what they're they're a. Uh, well, it's a three woman pop rap group. Yeah. And uh, we, me and the squad, it's it's seven of us, but right now it's just only four uh, four of us now because. Two of them are like one of them is already is injured. She'll be back probably like next month or so. Uh -huh. And our resident DJ who uh, who hasn't been a, who hasn't been here since um, last year, he'll be back in February, mid February. Oh, okay. okay. So um, what we did, we interviewed Boy. Actually, they were actually on uh, a previous show with um, Beauty and the Beat Radio. So it's all girls. Yeah, but their girls. acronym is Boy. Right. That's Pretty cute cool. on a shirt, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, well, you know what? Let's let's let it, let's at least introduce oh, Carlos yeah. because some once in a while you're going to come into the camera. Oh, yeah, I'm, no, I'm Carlos, good. you guys, I ran into Carlos. We've known each other since about 2009. Yeah. We met at a business conference, Correct. CEO space. Correct. I I've known you forever. I know about Correct. your baby boy that's yeah. now three years old. Yes. Your mom and I are working together as far as her nonprofit. Correct. And I did not expect to see you today. I didn't expect it either. It's just been a total blessing. I'm just grateful. Oh, my God. God just keeps opening up doors, man. He's yeah, amazing. yeah. So I want it because they're going to hear your voice now and then. I said, let's at least introduce you. Oh, no but problem. I want to go back real quick to Laron. <laughs> Laron, now, so this is an all-girl group, but their acronym is BOY. And if they wear that on a T-shirt, they have that on there, and that's they just. Had one, of the, one of the main leaders had their T-shirt yeah. last night. They, oh, okay. She was wearing it. Okay. And it says, Better Off Young. Yeah, yeah that is clever. Yeah, they did a show and tell performance with for us and everything. So okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and so you've been an engineer for two years, and but you also, you're in the industry. Yeah, um, I, I do music and recording, mix and mastering, and I, I do also rap as well. I do somewhat of producing beats, but not professionally yet. So later on in the show, we can show some of your stuff. Um, of course. Okay, good, good, good. Well, then my other guest, like I kind of jumped and showed you guys, is Carlos Martin. And I, I was so shocked to see you today. Yeah. And, you know, again, you guys, I was I was like, okay, Lord, you're going to give me something. I'm going to talk about something because I was expecting a show. And I wanted to still stay to the theme of grants and film and the entertainment industry. And I walk into the studio, and there's a previous show that's ending. And a young man speaks to me, but he has on a helmet because you must be here on a motorcycle. I am. And he looked familiar, and I was like, okay, hi. And I'm going on and setting up. And it's Carlos, <laughs> who is here because you've got some work going on. I do. So actually. tell us why you're here. Introduce yourself, first of all. Well, my name is Carlos Martin. My stage name is King Jaquel Martin. Um, I'm recently new to the Burbank area in the California. Um, I've been booking a lot of jobs. God has just bless me and open a lot of doors. Yeah. So I got to be the face of the Bank of America commercial. Um, I did their voiceover. I started in two different shows on the ID channel. I've done the Mountain Mike's Pizza commercial where <laughs> I was the principal actor. I've done a couple of web series. Wow. So I'm just navigating my way through Hollywood and just letting the God show up and show out. Well, you got a pretty good GPS talking about yeah. navigating. Oh, yeah. But of course you say God. Oh, yeah. And, Absolutely. And, and to me, uh, again, being a preacher's daughter, God is my original GPS. Oh, absolutely. Dad always said, if you keep God in the forefront, and then you give him praise, and then you stay in service, what GPS is better than that? Absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of people that have been here in, in California, in the L.A. area, trying to do what you're doing. And I know you were in Sacramento. No, you were in Northern a, California. I, I was in San Jose before I moved yeah. down here. Yeah. And so you've come down here, and, and you're jamming. I'm doing pretty well. Um, I got all my SAG <laughs> stuff when I was in San Jose. I went to um, Hill College, so I have three different AAs. I have an A in entrepreneurship, admin, and accounting. But I didn't want to go to school to make someone else rich. So yeah, yeah. I wanted to pursue my own passion and do what I love. And actually, 
you helped write my business plan for my nonprofit, which is called that FWL. That is so crazy. Which stands for Future World Leaders. So I'm, And here you are. I'm here. It's amazing. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. You know, again, you guys, um, it, it, I'm just overwhelmed because I was wondering what my show was going to be about today. And if you just stop and you just breathe, you just be still and say, Lord, give me a moment. Yeah. And so um, now I, I'm excited to have all of this young blood in the room that I I, I just wasn't even expecting. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, so and, and I made sure you guys, uh, as far as my audience, that I that I did introduce these two young men that didn't know each other before today, because it's so important collaboration. Mm -hmm. and and sharing resources we do that so little and oftentimes we will tell a stranger a connection quicker than we would tell someone that's in our circle and we've got to stop that we've got to start sharing our resources mm -hmm. and so you two are both in the industry you're doing two different things but I'm so mm -hmm. glad to introduce the two of yeah. you today and that you met before the show and so do you also have something out there that uh, possibly we can bring up um, do you yeah. have you have some information? I have my, um, my demo reel that people can um, check out my demo reel to yeah. showcase some of my acting. And Ron, you already have that available, right? Mm, yeah. Okay. Well, first thing I want to do, since since you were, I I started with you, I want to keep bouncing back and forth. Yeah. Oh, of course. You have yours available? Well, um, I'm not a demo reel, but I have my single that I'm pushing in March 21st. Yes. Good. I can't okay. Wait to do that. Okay. Well, let's let's introduce that to my audience and uh, let them see who I'm sitting in the room with every Wednesday. <laughs> okay, hold on just a minute, let me pull up the song. You know, the other thing too is, I'm so glad to be doing this because our young people, you get, they're such talent. Oh, absolutely. And, and uh, um, so often we as the older, uh, on the older spectrum, mm we want to hold the baton too long right. without mm -hmm. reaching back and passing and even if we're not totally letting it go we should be coaching and mentoring so that we're we're preparing young people to come in and feel our shoes Correct. and uh so i get excited when i see young people and 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 full of fire and so uh, are we ready oh yeah oh okay here is Laurent. What what is your entertainment name? I know you have a name. Man. Uh Laurent Pierce. That's that's my stage name that oh, okay. I go by. So, okay. Yeah. okay. Well here's Laurent Pierce. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Laurent Pierce. Um, my debut single off the execution album is called Resurrection. The full version that will be coming soon with featuring my boy Mad Manning, who collaborated with my favorite rapper of the game and his former protege, um, Juice McCain, who's now known as Richie Evans. So take a listen. Seen coming, huh? This is the moment I change my appearance, change my style. There's nothing more than my adherence. Possibly rectify my progression for greatness. Tantalize people's souls while they are famous. Music has changed, but I never change how I use it. Instead of vital tune, I would rather chop in the screw it. Revenge is the best success as I go through struggles. Obstacles, which in McCollum, when you're grinding, you hustle. Rose up from the dead, came back as a new person. New looks, new attitude with a relevant purpose to live life as a man I was. Destined to be an underground MC that has goals and dreams. Everyone hating me now, loving me for some reason. It's like they choosing sides as an angel or demon. Actually, I'm about actions, not words, and I show it. This is my true resurrection, damn right, and you know it. Know it. Ever since I've been resurrected, the reward's on me. Walking up and down in the streets, yeah, so lonely. Action speaks louder than words, and I show it. This is my true resurrection, resurrection, know it. Ever since I've been resurrected, the reward. Saw me walking up and down in the streets, so lonely. Action speaks louder than words, and I show it. This is my true resurrection, know it. I conquered almost everything Achieving a lot of success was astonishing My yeah. parents did an excellent job raising the son uh. Who excels to not have babies or do drugs In 2015 I graduated with a degree It took me years to become a better MC Honing my craft and knowing my talent I knew I had it in me and took that challenge uh. I did it all at the age of 23 That's yeah. how many years I've been single I never missed a beat huh? Resurrection is the best thing Happened to me, transformed to a new man I wanted to be. 
Executing every plan with no questions asked Take my opportunities before it don't last Sacrificing all so I can just have it all You can do one of these two choices, rise or fall Ever since I've been right, directed the rewards on me Walking up and down in the streets, yeah, so lonely Action speaks louder than words and I show it This is my true resurrection, I know it Ever since I've been right, directed the rewards on me Walking up and down in the streets, so lonely Action speaks louder than words and I show it This is my true resurrection, I know it Know it, know it Wow, I am so impressed. Oh my goodness. I am sitting in the studio. I'm just calling him my man because of what he does on the ah. here on the board. But my goodness. And you do the mixing? I mean, that's you? I did everything. I, I mixed and mastered, recorded my own. Well, I recorded my, own voc my vocals with... Um, at my school, at um, LA Recording School, where I graduated from. Yeah. So I, I did my own mix and mastering one personally. So. Oh my gosh, I am so impressed. And see, again, Ryan, you know I'm always gonna talk talk about some grants. Oh Lord. You know, <laughs> and the, the thing is, the the National Endowment for the Arts. You guys gotta hear this because see, you can have your own studio. Right. They media projects, production grant support, film, television, radio projects for general audiences that encourage active engagement with humanity's ideas. They do film and television grants. It may be single programs or a series of addressing significant figures. Radio projects, including podcasts, may involve single programs, limit, limited series, segments within an ongoing, but also right. production. You can get a, a, a studio and be working with young people or working with young artists that want to get moving. Because right. you're so talented. Oh my goodness. I'm I'm so impressed. Wow. Wow. What did you think of it? I can't wait to go cop that single. Uh, Let me know where I can get it ASAP. And it's coming out March twenty. March twenty first. March twenty first. Uh, yeah. It's it's uh, the whole song really is just about resurrection because um, my brother passed away on that day, ah. which is um, and people say that I'm like the reincarnation of my brother, which his name is Reginald Dotson. So oh, okay. So yeah, Reggie Dotson uh, was was married. Um, New Year's Eve on 2009 and March 21st, 2010, he passed at 32 years old. He would have been, uh, he would have been 38 next month on the uh, 16th. He would have been 38 this year. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I know you he passed away. And that. what's the name of it? Say it name. again. The song? The, the song? The song is called Resurrection. Resurrection. So, wow. yeah. So that, that, and that also too, and also too, it changed me as a man mm. and from what I used to be mm. and transformed to a man that I'm going to be. And and already walking that's in powerful. it. Yeah. Wow. Oh so my it's, goodness. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff in the works. Um, I just released my EP called The Ron's Regression on the 29th. Um, on um, last year. So if someone wants to reach you, mm -hmm. I mean, you've got individuals that, that, that because they see that you have that skill to, they, they've got a beat they want to some uh, lyrics that they have or whatever, how do they reach you? Well, they can reach me anywhere because I'm on Google Book and in my, um, and I'm noticed on Google because I am uh, all my songs are on, uh, on Google now. So wow. it's on iTunes, Spotify, you name it. So, but again, um, you can go ahead and show it. You can always um, type in Laron Pierce, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everything, SoundCloud, Bandcamp, you name it. It's outstanding. Wow, Laron, I didn't even know. I don't know who I'm sitting in the room with. <laughs> For real. You just got to ask. That boy good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Man. And, sir. Yes, ma'am. Tell us what you're doing. Okay, now, so you've, you've been on the commercials, all of that. Yes, ma'am. Laron has something that you got a, a sizzle reel or you have something for him is it queued already or is it ready uh, I'm about to be in a minute okay so okay. what's next for you well right now I'm looking to go down to the LAPD public relations office uh -huh. to talk to them about challenge for change I'm looking to start a movement to help fix the relationship between the public and the police you know when we first met you know I was wrongfully jumped by a right. one officers me and my ex or whatever else so I always ask God, why did he allow me to live through that situation? And I believe it's for this moment. You know, I mean, if we get cell phones and we have to upgrade them, times change too. Mm -hmm, so the laws mm -hmm. that we have, they just mm -hmm. need to be updated. Yeah. You know, we yeah. just need to update the system. So I feel that I have an opportunity to take 
what I've been through, uh -huh. my storm and turn it into a rainbow for other people. Matter of fact, when we met, you were going through a case. Correct. There was, you had just gotten out of the service or something. Correct. But mm -hmm. tell us what happened there. Um, basically, I was coming home from a long day at work. I was doing a uniform inspection for PSD Carlisle just to make sure that she was dressed right dressed for tomorrow. Um, I came home to Quail Run and entered the neighborhood. There's a police officer already there. He was supposed to be out there looking for a white male flashing little kids. Um, I followed him. I was riding right behind him. And as we came to my parking lot, we became parallel. I acknowledged him. He acknowledged me. I got out my car. I walked to the door and I hear a car peel off. Next thing I know, he, the officer's running towards me. He's like, hey, you come here, come here. I'm out here for a noise violation. I said it couldn't have been me, I just got home. So he asked for my license of registration. I handed him all the proper documents, except for my picture license was lost in Germany because I had just got back, so the Alaska DMV sent me a paper license. Mm -hmm. He said, what the um, H is this? I said, dude, if you just calm down, you can see that I just got back from Germany. He got upset because I called him dude. And I said, well, that's because I don't know your name. He's like, well, I don't know your name either. And then he slams me to the ground. He starts beating on me, kicking me, um, macing me. So the police officer's mother comes up from the upstairs who lived above me to get um, my wife at the time. She comes outside and she takes pictures of the situation. Um, to make a long story short, the police came. They wind up jumping her too, so they handcuffed her. What? Threw up against the car, she drops her phone. They pick her up by the back of her arms and slam her into the ground face first. So as a husband, to sit there and watch a loved one get beat on and there's nothing that you can do about it, you know, just, is I can't explain the feeling or whatever else in words. Yeah, um, yeah. I used to play some of pro football, so I used to take everybody's children to the games or whatever else, so it was like a lot of women and children watching. So he calls for backup, backup comes. Um, that's what they did to Tashiana, so then they call for the paddy wagon. They put us in the back of the paddy wagon and then they, officer said that they were gonna take Tashiana to the hotel. He tried to say hotel was a term for jail, but we all know that's, first of all, it's not a way to speak to a woman or a someone's wife, or it's just not following police laws, or that's right, not what right, they're right. trying to do. That's just not even right to say whether you're a police officer or whatever. Correct. You know, okay. just bad ethics or whatever else. Um, so, Which is why many of them need communication skills. And, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So that yeah. that's part of the challenge for change. So I went to court or whatever else. We were found not guilty on all charges. Went for the lawsuit or whatever else. They said Tashiana was too close when she took her pictures. But the judge knew the head juror, you know, in South Carolina. Things are rigged. They're under federal investigation right now. And my lawyer, hypothetically, let's just say, I feel that he sold me out because he tricked me out of dropping the police charge because he said he would represent me on all these other charges for my case. And then he tried to charge my mom $20,000. We didn't have it, so we didn't go to court. I'm, I've never been to court, my civil suit. So we had to appeal, and now they're under federal investigation. Wow. Yeah. That is, this officer. Is the is same officer that beat the little girl up. In just the here last month or something. Um, yeah, I think it was like maybe two months ago or something okay. like that in South Carolina. Yes. Uh, Spring Valley High the School. The same officer. The same officer. So the reason, and this is why it hurt me even more, because what he did to me, because my family couldn't afford to fight the system the right way, he was allowed to do it to someone else's baby and they put him at the school after what he did to me. So the reason why he was at the school was because of what he did to me and my family. So, you know, I did, I put my phone number out there. I was trying to get in contact with the young lady or whatever else just to let her know that it's okay because she was going through what she was going through. Supposedly she had lost both parents. Supposedly she was in a foster home. Supposedly she was on medication. So I just wanted to let her know that she, she's loved by somebody. You know, she's not the only one that went through that. And anytime she wants to call me, fill out, need someone to talk to, I'll always be here for her. Yes, yes, yes. Wow, that is such a trip. Yeah. And you were saying to me that that was the same day. Yeah, oh, absolutely. So it happened on the same day, 10 years apart. I did 10 years in the Army. I was wrongfully facing 10 years in jail. And October is the 10th month. So it's amazing how all this lined wow. up like that. My story would have never been heard if it never happened to the little girl. So I hate that it happened to her, but right. at the same time, I am get some sort of type of relief or justice to be able to get my story out there, and now the officer no longer has that job. Well, what, what that's a good thing. Yeah. But what tends to happen is, until something happens again, Right. people don't, I mean, that's uh, something as even as horrible as a rape. A lot of times it's not the first time it happens, Correct. is when it has repeated that they see there's a pattern, and then that happens. You well, know, he has they, multiple they cases. He has a wow. case against a little girl. He has a case against a little boy. And, uh, you know, and they were all waiting for these to come to trial. My thing is, it's not just about the officer. It's about the system. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to say all, because all cops aren't bad. 
You know, right, right, right. he That's just happened true. to be a bad seed. So my thing is, we always want to tell officers, hey, you know who the bad cops are. Why don't you just write them out? Well, that applies to the public, too. Yes. You, you know, so we have to be able to step up to the plate for ourselves. And we can't just point fingers without looking at our own reality because not the, everyone's not a good citizen. Because so often when someone does, after so many offenses, Correct. get in trouble, then you'll hear a neighbor saying, that boy's been doing such and such since he was five. For the longest. You know? Correct. But they should have said something sooner. A exactly. So we all are responsible for making yes. not only our communities better, yes. but even our young people. I mean, because they're watching us. Absolutely. And so, wow, that's just so amazing. And that's why so I started the, um, the challenge for change. And my thing is, I feel that, like you st stated earlier, that the police should have to go through sensitivity training and how to handle the public. Yes, yes. But on the flip side of that, I think the public needs to have classes where they can find out, and this is where the nonprofit stuff can come in or whatever uh -huh. else, we mm -hmm. can create a business or nonprofit to teach the public about the laws yes. and how to handle when a police officer pulls them over, what's the correct policies and the procedures, right. and when they, so that way they know if their rights are being violated or right, not. Right, right. We know, um, and this is a perfect segue into, we did the nonprofit for the Michael Brown family, mm -hmm. and I want to introduce you to Ty uh, Pruitt, okay. who is, here locally, okay. but he's the cousin, and they're the ones that contacted me about that. Because, again, so often when, when whether it's an officer that comes to our community or whatever, they they need to be able to deal with the African American community or any community exactly. based on how people may even answer because of their culture. Correct. You know, everyone's not going to answer yes, sir. Correct. You know now, uh, but at the same time. If we're, if we're rearing our young people and showing them how they should be communicating, then a lot of things also would not happen. Right. And so, uh, like you said, all of us are responsible. Right, it's a duality. For, we just can't blame the police for yes, everything. Yes, just that's as the true. same way the police just can't say, oh, he's black, I'm gonna shoot. Right. No, I mean, there's a duality of it. And that's why I feel that we need to upgrade the system because once we adjust the systems and we stop police from feeling as if or certain police feeling as if they can do whatever they want, then they can do better and they can have a better right. look or image. In the same time, if we start stepping up in our own neighborhoods or whatever else to start talking about who's doing wrong in our neighborhoods, then we can do something together and not build that we can believe a bri um, build a bridge right. between the public and the police to fix this relationship. Excellent, excellent. Well, let's see. Are we ready to to watch one of his things and then we'll we'll be back at you. So this is Carlos Martin. Give us an intro of what this is that he's going okay, to. Okay, so this is basically a, my demo reel where I start in a couple of different shows and I'm playing a couple of different characters. There is a little bit of bad language in it, but it's the entertainment world that happens. It's television. <laughs> Talking about Fatima? Hey, hold it. Watch oh, oh, watch me work. How are you ladies doing today? My name is Carlson. Fatima. How about we play a game of one on one? It's one on one. You're not scared of a little bit of D, are you? Okay. Okay. I might have to mess around and make you my wife one day, girl. Hello? The first order. Are you serious? Roger that. No, 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 no. You already know how this works. Mm -hmm. I have to go. I gotta do my job. What's your excuse? What are you talking about? What do you want me to do? C call him back! Why are you acting like I don't want to be there for my son? Call him back! Fatima! How many times have we had this conversation? Conversation about what? You don't see all these freaking dishes? Why is the house so nasty? Listen here, Fatima! It's After a year in Iraq, Carlton's also having a hard time adjusting to family life. I'm out there getting shot at. Here's a bro. You do the bro just like this. That's all I gotta do. Stephanie? You can't be serious, you know him? Aren't you Aaron Evans? Uh, yeah. Hey, did you just play point at Stonebrook State College? Yeah, how did you know that? <laughs> why, why are you shaking my head? I'd like to see you take more shots off one dribble. Really? You know, how many games did you come to? I played. All of them? I'm totally sorry about this whole thing. Oh, it's all good, man. What the fuck is this? I don't, I don't know, boss. You believe this shit? I believe it. Out of everybody, you, Alan, after everything I done did for you, all the money I invested, how many times have I had your back? That's how the fuck you would pay me? That's how the fuck you would pay me, Alan? Wow. <laughs> yeah, okay, so intense. that was like three different. Yeah. So the first one, okay. you're, you're in the service mm -hmm. and you meet. 
Fatima, is that her name? Correct. Okay. And so basically the show's called Wise With Knives. Um, that episode is Army Lovers that um, I'm in. I think it's 309 if I'm not mistaken. And so basically what happens is I meet a young lady and she's going through all these different experiences and she's never had an opportunity to grow up. And so her mom and them encourage her to wind up going into the military because she had got pregnant in high school. Uh, she got pregnant while she initially was in the military, but she wound up losing that baby and then I wind up marrying her or whatever else. So she goes to Iraq first, I come back to Iraq, and we both have PTSD. And then you see that big old explosion. Well, right. she winds up stabbing me like 16 times in the scene, in the shower or whatever else, and I wind up calling the police on her or whatever else, and then the police come and arrest her at the end of the show. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Now you know what I'm gonna say. There's a grant for that. <laughs> There's so much money for PTSD mm. even. And so I keep mentioning this because also you have a nonprofit Correct. And and there's uh, you know I actually here, have PTSD too, so I need to know this. Information. And see, the grants watch. There's grants for veterans. Uh, the the grants uh, post traumatic stress. There's the brain and behavioral funding. Okay. There's just so much. If you just even in Google type in PTSD, comma grants, mm. and it just shows all these different funders. Um, and so in looking at that now, and then also you have uh, the the second scene. Okay, that that was uh, sex sent me to the slammer. So basically, I'm playing Aaron Evans. I'm a college basketball player or whatever else. I just got off from work. The young lady that you saw in the back of the truck, she, I meet her at a bar. She was having a bad time. So I sent her a drink anonymously, and then she figures out that it's from me. So we leave the bar or whatever else after the last call. And so we're making out in the car or whatever else, and so we pull over to a park. So the police officer that happens to walk up, that was actually the police officer's girlfriend. Uh, and that's why I was like, you guys know each other? So that was his girlfriend. But the police officer happened to be a fan of me when he recognized who I was because I was a celebrity basketball player. Right. So he was like, oh my God, you're Aaron Evans? Dude. And he like knew all my stats or whatever else. And so the young lady, she was like, what? I can't believe you guys. What, what's going on? He was like, shut up, Stephanie. You know? Yeah. So he puts her in the back of the cop car and then they take me to a diner where they give me some food, I sober up, and then I send them some basketball tickets at the end of the show. So you don't go to jail? No, they let me out. Oh my I gosh! Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it was, like, so it was crazy, right? So who's right? the director of that? Um, Ted Leonard. And and the first the first one who was that director? Uh, Ted Leonard did both. Ted, uh, both yeah. of those. And then the third one and is. And the, the third one is a video shoot that I was doing with my friend. His name is uh, Alan Ramos. He's a professional dancer. He comes out to L.A. all the time. And so we were basically just uh, shooting his first dance video with some action scenes in it. So we just took that clip out of the action scene and just added it to the demo reel. You know. This is to my audience. <laughs> I'm just in awe because today's show was going to be with, again, Babu, who is the founder of the Pan-African Film Festival. And he was going to be here today. He, uh, we talked at 4 o'clock, and he was saying, Sharita, you know, there's just too much going on because the African American Film Festival is starting this month on February 4th and is going through the 15th. Go to PAF. PAFF.org. That's Pan African Film Festival.org. But what he focuses on is bringing African American films to the forefront. Mm. And this is so perfect because he talked to me about Sharita, you need to be there for the red carpet and be there for all of these different things. And he right. gave me some people. You need to be there. I would love and to And so, part of that. you know, you and I, we need to talk about you going okay. there with me. And, um, and so, and Laurent, have you met him? Uh, we might, uh, you guys. I might need the two of go? you on my arms, you know. <laughs> and carpet. we go and we go to the red carpet for for path. And so, because this is so perfect, that I was wondering how the show. I wanted to still stay through the theme, right? Because it's been advertised in this way, and so right. the people that are watching today, that's where their interest is. Correct. And I, I'm in awe that I had no idea which way the show was going yeah. to go, and here both of you. That's where we can remain. <laughs> right. And so I, I know I keep giving praise, but it's like he just keeps saying, I'm the man, yeah, you know? I got you, I got you. And you guys, I, I mean, I didn't, Ron, I mean, you've been my engineer now for quite some time, and I didn't know what you do. It's just, it's just amazing. How long have you been doing what you do? How long have you been into the music, even? Well, I started rapping since, uh, that's funny, because uh, it's actually... 11 years, two months now, so... How do you know the two months? Uh, How did you time it like that? What what made you remember it like that? Well, it happened in 2004. Um, my cousin, um, who was getting married, actually, on the 30th, I was supposed to be there 
for his wedding on the 30th, but... Where's he I getting married? Leave. He's Where's getting he? married in Texas. Oh, okay. Like, all the family members is in Texas. Okay. He just had two. He just had a daughter, like, who is now three, I believe, or oh. two. And now he just had a son. Like, um, he's, like, five months old now or six okay. months old. Okay, okay. So uh, he actually inspired me to rap when he was... Because he was a battle rapper at the time. So he goes by... Um, Okay, I'm old yep. school. What is battle rapper? Battle rap is basically <laughs> when you go at each other, like oh, like I've seen on the movies. Like, you like, say like, something like and war, then the other like, one. Like, okay, like a war, uh, I kind of thought war that, words. but I was like, yeah. let me make sure. Okay, yeah. so he taught me some pointers because I was rapping on some Snoop Dogg line, and it was like Leron. Is that you rapping? I was like, nah, I was rapping some Snoop Dogg rapped about it. He was like, you want me to teach you how to rap? And I was like, sure. And he taught me how to freestyle and all that. But I'm not really good at freestyling. I'm just more of the writing mm. of prospect. So you are a writer. Right. And there's funding for creative writing. <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay, so, so Ron, so I still am stuck on how did you know it was that many years and two months? Well... At least I didn't know the exact day, but it was just that back in 2004, that time in December. Okay, it was December. We always, cause okay. Because that was the year, that was the, the, the month we always get together. Okay. Mm. Like every, All right, that's every clear December. Now. So, like, yes. the, after Christmas time, so, like, we just get together and we just, like, do all that. So, we, one day we just started freestyling out of nowhere out of my grandmother's truck. Uh -huh. and we just started, I was just making the beats and my cousin was rapping, my other cousin was rapping as well. He's, like, one year older, older than me. But, uh -huh. So, we just started freestyling and whatever and... And everything was starting good. And he just went off with his music career, but he just didn't go follow through because he has so much stuff going on because he's been, like, doing all the court, going through court and all that because mm -hmm. of, like, all the fight issues and all that, too. So he beat that case, but now he's getting married. So, wow. so yeah. So. Congratulations to him. You said yeah. he's a battle rapper? He used, to, he used to battle rap. He's actually still undefeated, I believe. He actually beat me in a rap battle. I don't even know how to rap, like, and freestyle like that. Okay. But, you know. Battle rap. Yeah, I, I've mean, seen I love that battle on rap. Television? The URL and everything yeah. else. So yeah, I follow that. I follow yeah. that heavy. I've seen it on television. I just didn't know that that's what it was called. Yeah. Right. And so, and uh, so you've been, so it's how many years and two months? 11, 11 years and two 11 months. 11 years and two months. And you've been, would you say, in the entertainment industry for how long? Um, well, I've been acting a fool my whole life, but I've probably been in the entertainment industry maybe like three four years now yeah yeah, yeah. okay yeah. I'm, I'm just I'm just blown away you know um, Bill Duke uh, was a client a few years ago and Bill is very interested in helping young people to go into the industry okay. and he's working with the school down a, 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 a private school down on Wilshire called um, educating young minds mm -hmm. and so it's been about three years ago we helped them get a hundred thousand dollars to advance the program. Right. But the more that I keep talking to people in the entertainment industry and I tell them, look, this money is available. And they, they just think it's not. Right. Uh, right. And you don't have to be a Bill Duke to get it. Yeah. And so, please, I mean, not only should you guys continue to pursue your career, but there's someone else that you could be coaching that that doesn't know what you know right. or if I you're needing it. headshots or, go ahead, Ron. Yeah, I have a lot of people that want, want me to teach them how to wrap my, um, my brother, not, not my brother, but he's like a friend of mine that we've been best friends for years. I yeah. just called my brother. He wanted me to teach him how to rap. And I know other people want me to teach, teach him how to rap and all that. So, And that's your probably. intellectual property. Right. Your brain and what you use to do that, there's funding to pay you to do that. And so right. the thing is, what I'm saying is you make it a program. So right. now you have a rap program. You've got creative writing. You've got teaching all but the other thing that's so important like how we were talking about even whether it's police officers or community mm -hmm. there's individuals that can rap and can write but their communication skills are not good right or they they need some life skills right and so as you are working with these individuals these you in. bring that in and you don't have to be the one to do that there's funding that there's a program already that's dealing with life skills mm -hmm. or and even whether you're in the entertainment industry or not even in corporate America, they're not going by your IQ anymore. Right. They want your EQ. What is your emotional quotient? Mm. Because individuals, the reason why people say they went postal right. is because they they were having issues as far as dealing with team building skills or communicating. Right. And so they go postal. We're going to see a whole lot more people going postal. Right. We are in a pandemic state at this yeah, time, right you guys. Mm -hmm. And if we do not start helping our young people, not only in the skill set that they have, whether it's rap, music, math, science, whatever, 
It doesn't matter if they're a genius if they don't know how to talk to people. Right, right. It doesn't matter if they have the skills to be a doctor or a nurse, but, but they don't have a right. bedside manner. Right. And if we don't do something soon, we're going to look up and see them again when we need them the, the most. And what right. makes me right. think about that is when my father was in the hospital and one of the ladies was changing my dad's IV. And I'm so glad that I was in the room with them because she got a phone call and it wasn't the hospital calling her it was her cell phone because all of us have our cell phone on right. us now and she said girl hold on she had her earbuds in mm -hmm. and girl hold on she goes walking out my dad's IV wide open you know and I'm like wait a minute right. and so a lot of times when people pass wow. away they may think that oh he was just old no it's human error right and but if you have someone that has empathy if you have someone that has that bedside manner you know they care about who they're dealing with Right. And that's why I'm saying we're not going to like it when we look up at these individuals that we have not done right. our part. This is happening on our watch. Right. You guys, though you're much younger than I am, there's young people coming behind you right. Right. that that you need to help them demonstrate what I see in you. Right. You know, it's just not happenstance that you're on my show with me today. Leron, I trust who you are, and I know that we could have a good show. And even if your rap said something else, I know you. Right. I know you well enough to know what you would present. Right. Carlos, I've known you since 2008, 2009. Yes, ma'am. But there's a lot of young people that need to hear your voice and hear your voice. Mm -hmm. How do we do that? That's why I'm doing the FWL. I'm going to make sure I go ahead and get Tell that out there. Tell us about FWL. Um, FWL stands for Future World Leaders, and basically what I'm going to be doing with your blessing and your help is going around teaching young adults how to become entrepreneurs. Because it's, people say an intellectual test is the, well, the IQ is done by a test. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that uh, really it's how you bring out the genius in someone else. Mm -hmm. It's not done by a test. Can you, can you inspire someone else? Um, I said earlier on the other show that Tupac says, I don't have to be the fire but I can be the spark that ignites the flame for the future. Yeah, because so, it needs that spark. And, yeah. <laughs> we have to keep passing it down. I think we get so caught up in just talking about the next generation. Right. Oh, this generation ain't going to be this. And then when they become that, then we're mad. Well, that's what you spoke over them. Yes. But the sad thing about it is they spoke the same thing about you when you came. Exactly. So when do we exactly. stop speaking that and start speaking life over the next generation? Right, and right. And so that's what FWL is, is basically an opportunity to teach other people how to become Entrepreneurs teach them how to make their dreams a reality. Mm -hmm. and we can do that mm -hmm. through you helping us write grants and nonprofits and teaching them what they're entitled to. You mm -hmm. know, the mm -hmm. Bible says, "My people perish for their lack of knowledge." Well, what's the point of having knowledge? I, when I graduated college, I had this quote, and it said, uh, "The biggest lie is knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is not power. Knowledge is just knowledge." Right. But applying, applying knowledge Applying the is knowledge being powerful. Yes Because yes. what's the point of knowing everything If you don't do anything with yes, it Yes So we need to make sure That we pass this knowledge That we have To the future So that way our future Can do something with it yes. To make a better change And you know what It's so perfect for you to say that Because even when people Look at the homeless downtown Excuse me They think they're stupid it's a lot of very smart people downtown. Oh, absolutely. But because of whatever happened in life circumstances, mm -hmm. they're there. So the knowledge, like you said, is not what gets you there. It's applying it. It's right. the action that follows behind the knowledge. And, and and a lot of them are veterans. A lot of them are the same ones who went overseas and fought and people fought that you didn't us. know. Yes. The same yes. people you're talking about is the same people who protected you. Right. And you would never know and you would never, like, like we, sometimes we become so desensitized that we wouldn't even think to say thank you or think to return the gift to someone who protected us yes. blindly. Yes. They protected you without even knowing you, but mm -hmm. yet we walk by them and talk down on people exactly. and don't even know who they are. Right, right, right. Well, you know, I, I'm again, I want to thank you guys. Today, this is Sharita J. It's drive time here in Los Angeles, and I have two very good friends. Uh, I have my <laughs> engineer, Leron Pierce, who is over there. He's working that board, and he's also serving as a guest. Yeah. And then another young man that I met at a business conference. I started working with he and his family for their nonprofit. Walked into the studio today, had no idea I would see him. And so Mr. Carlos Martin, who is also in the entertainment industry. And I'm excited about this because, again, my very special guest was supposed to be today, Mr. Mr. Babu, who is the founder of the Pan-African Film Festival. And I was wondering how I was going to stay into this arena. And so for those of you that probably were not tuned in earlier in the show, it just so happened that I walk in and everyone that I needed, a lot of times when you just stay in your mm. passion, when you follow your inner GPS, the things that you need 
are right there. They're right around the corner. And that is a perfect example of what happened today. Because I was even wondering what I was going to talk about. And I said I still wanted to stay into the, the framework of talking about the entertainment industry, talking about filming, talking about grants that can apply to that, mm -hmm. funding this for pre and post production. How do you get into the industry? Those were questions that I already had for Babu. Right. And here you guys fall right into that. So again, <laughs> this is Sharita J and my very special guest again is Mr. Carlos Martin and my engineer, Laron Pierce. Hey. Laron, hey. I want to go back to you. Okay. Uh, some of the people that you've worked with, or first of all, since, you, since you've been doing this, is there anyone that you look up to this in this industry? Who oh, I look up to? Uh, I don't really look up to anybody like that, really. Yeah. But, but I do have inspiring people that inspired me in my whole life, which is my favorite rapper, Immortal Technique. Wow. He made this song called Dance with the Devil, and it was like a wake-up call, because I used to rap about, like, oh, I think he got a caller. Okay, okay. Um, well, we'll get that. So, so while we're getting that, um, he he would rap about what? What's that? He will rap about. Um, no, I'm actually saying that I used to rap about like women and all this other stuff. So then, dancing with the devil kind of changed that. Yeah. Help you make you more consciously. Ah. Right. Yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. Well, let's see. We've got a caller. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, let me plug in. Caller, are you there? I think I got the bad he headphone headphones again. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Call caller, you're on. Caller, hi. If you'd like to make a call. Uh-oh, they we lost it. Well, not. that's okay. Okay, so yeah. you, you were saying that Dancing with the Devil... It, it, it kind of made you look at something differently. Yeah, it's, it's a, pol a political song. It's like a storytelling song that I, um, that I, um, that it was introduced um, from a friend that I, he let me listen to it, and I was like, who's this? And I was like, Mortal Technique. But that's funny because, oh, that caller came, uh, called back. Okay. Caller, you on the Drive Time Show. What's your name, where you calling from? Hi. My name is Taliba, and I'm from Minneapolis. Hi. Thanks for tuning in from Minneapolis. Do you have all that snow like everyone else? Well, Sue, I'm actually in Dallas. I oh, yeah. Just, yeah. Okay. I'm in Dallas, so I missed it. Oh, <laughs> aren't you the lucky one? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but, yeah. No, so I wanted to just comment that um, it's, it's beautiful because God worked it out. It's, what's happening is what's supposed to happen. Yes, ma'am. And ma the fact that the subject matters are right in flow with one another. Right, But right. what I really wanted to say to the young men was that this thing, that, you know, I'm trying to do this program bridging youth, seniors, and young children. Mm -hmm. And that is what I really see happening is what he was talking about, not turning your back not acting a certain way right. and speaking into people, speaking into our youth, the right. saggy pants or the girl who's walking around with tights on instead of leggings, uh -huh. speaking into their promise because in them is something greater, yes, <laughs> yes. greater than, and, and I'm blessed to have come through the micro miniskirt era and to have your aunt, my cousin, who I affectionately call Aunt Nett, yes, pulled me to the side and said, "Come here, baby." Rather than say, "You little fast," blah blah blah. Right. Oh. You know, she said, "Uh uh, I know you didn't leave home in that." Uh huh. <laughs> Be be because I know your mama. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and yeah. you know what? And the thing is, is that so often. Either either the mama is trying to dress like the daughter or you've got some individuals that because we are in such right. transition and the people that used to see us down the street, uh, neighbors right. are not even knowing each other anymore that kept us right. in line. But you had someone like Annette that was there. And see, we've got to look at that our young people now so often they don't have that. And then they're watching on television the basketball wives or whatever. And I'm not saying that all these shows are bad, but there's things that you can do on television and in the entertainment industry that is not appropriate for when you're going to school or That's to correct. work. And if yeah. you don't have that individual at home or if you don't have neighbors that used to keep you in line the way our neighbors did, then where is their guidance? Correct. Yes, correct. yes. And I, I think that like what the young man talked about a, a little earlier 
um, is when you see someone going through, don't don't speak uh, death into their lives. Right. Because that could be the next Michelle Obama if you just speak over their lives. Right. The right. Way you know we from the south. You right. Know, we from some hills. Right. And right, all right. of those people all had a hand. Mm-hmm. And so if we all give, okay, so Mama's walking around naked and not doing what she's supposed to do and sitting up watching Real Housewives or preachers who, you, whatever that program is with the ministers who make excuses about living <laughs> yeah. the way they live. So we don't have, you know, we don't have to, we don't, we can't be concerned about that. Not, right. not, I, I don't mean not concerned. I'm saying, but don't condemn the children that come out of that environment. Right, right. I, I, before my daughter got sick and I came to Texas, I taught some fourth, fourth graders in South Minneapolis. Uh-huh. And when we talk, they talk to me about the real housewives, and I know more about them people than I, I, I don't own a television. Uh-huh. But I know about them because of my fourth graders. Yeah. But when I continue to teach them about the greatness that was within them, and I can do that because my parents and our aunts and uncles and Aunt Net and all them put that in me. Mm-hmm. So when, mm-hmm. when I got through, they were coming up to me with different projects to do. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, and again, I, I, you know, I want to thank you so much for tuning in and uh, uh, speaking this positiveness because, see, uh, uh, so often you hear individuals they just complain about what our young people are doing, but I say, look, if you're not, if you're going to complain about it and not be proactive and do something, then it, you, you just shouldn't even say anything. Right. Right. Well, I'm not going to take all the time up with your callers. Um, other people probably trying to call in, but I just wanted to commend both of the young brothers on uh, what they're doing. And it's, it's like I said, God always knows your 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 first guest wasn't able to make it, but yes. you're still right in the same neighborhood. Oh my God, this was such a blessing. It was such a blessing the way it happened, and so yes. and Babu, um, uh, I know that that he will hear this later. Even even in speaking to him right before the show, I didn't feel as bad because he took time and, and we talked for a moment. And he said, Sharita, there's some other things we're going to do. He wanted to make sure that I'm there for the red carpet. And and these young men are someone that I think should be there with me. And so, um, Talaba, yeah. again, I want to thank you because I know your voice. When you called in, I was like, I know her. And yeah, I thank you, you for sure tuning know. in because so often, too, Family and close friends, most of the time, don't listen to my show. It's usually oh, yeah. the strangers that tune in. And so it's always good to know that I've got some family that tunes in. That's right. And, Shub, I have to tell you that, you know, I've been through my job. And I've had and I lost and had and lost. And you have inspired me rather than to, you know, just give up and say, oh, well, you know, that uh-huh. was, I had it a few times and I've lost it and that's it. Yeah. So yeah, I try to support on every opportunity I have because you 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 spoken life back into the And soul. you know what? Again, thank you so much. Be- See, that's why when I talk about people on your bus and the individuals that yeah are there because you and I, you were always my older brother and sister's age. And so even in growing up... um, You didn't have to say that I was old. Well, well, no, you're just a couple of years. (laughs) But see, when you're a kid, two or three years is a lot. And so we, (laughs) as adults, we're just now connecting. And we connected through Facebook. That's why I love social media. And you never know how someone is going to show up in your life later. That's why I don't put people off my bus. That's That's why I don't get mad at someone and say I'm never going to talk to them again. Because you and I had no idea that here it is over 40 years later. Mm -hmm. And you and I talk more than some of the cousins that I've been very close to for years. And so you just never know. you got to be careful when you get mad and say you're not going to talk to someone or when you're in business and you shut them off when that's someone that you still need in business. And so, again, thank you so much for supporting the show and calling thank in. Thank you. Thank you for having the show to, to be supported. And great, thank great, you great. For all that you have guided me to in, what is that? I love to see here. Um, What's the comedian's name that's on your show? The woman, she just got married. Kim Coles. Yes. Yeah. I like when she repeats what you said about there's a 
there's a rant for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Matter of fact, Kim was going to be on my Valentine show, but you know, she's a newlywed. So she said, well, I may not be able to be on that show, but let me know when I can come on another because I want to have yeah. a special um, for it. Since I'm mentioning it, my Valentine show, which is going to be on the 10th, is about love, health and wealth. And so for my listeners, we're going to be talking about not only love relationships, but how do you keep yourself healthy? How do, even if that person is not in your life at this time, sometimes God or the, or the universe or whatever is waiting on you to get healthy within yourself before they bless you with someone else. So that's what the show is going to be about on February 10th. I think it's the 10th on that Wednesday, but it's before Valentine's Day. Talaba, again, thank you so much for calling in. I love you, thank girl. You. I love you too. Say thank say you say hello to my guests. Thank hey. you. Hello. Hello, hello to both hello. you young brothers. I'm so excited and proud of you. And thank you for doing what you do. You inspire me. You inspire me. <laughs> thank you so so much. Talk right. soon. Love you. Okay, Bye-bye. love you too. Bye. You know, again, fellas, it, it it's perfect the way today happened. Um not that that I would not have enjoyed the show with Babu. But Babu is already, he's touching lives, and you guys are in the industry. Uh, you're the next generation coming along, and so mm-hmm. he needs to also know you. And without a doubt, he knows someone that could help you in what you're uh, planning to do. Absolutely. And so I feel like everything happens in divine order. Mm-hmm. And um, we just have a few more minutes. Tell them how to reach you, uh, uh, Carlos. Um, you can find me by carlos.martin112 at yahoo.com on Facebook. And all my other social media platforms is CLUV112. Okay. And Mr. Leron Pierce? Well, I'm Googleable, so um, just type in Leron Pierce, L A R O N, space, P I E R C E. All the social media links are up there. Uh, you, can tune, um, you can check out Leron's progression. It's everywhere on iTunes, Spotify, and it's on SoundCloud. So just go ahead and check it out, my music. Um, Resurrection coming soon with the full version on March 21st. Get that, get that. (laughs) (laughs) Very nice. (laughs) Okay, and again, this is Sharita J. Drive Time out of L.A. with my very special guest, my engineer, LaRon Pierce, my special surprise guest, Carlos Martin. We've been talking today about film funding and being in the entertainment industry and music. Go back. For those of you, we're going to have this posted on YouTube so that you can go back and play this show. Tune in every Wednesday to Sharita J. Drive Time. I want to thank you so much for being with me and find joy in your life. Make sure that you're operating in your passion because there is profit for that. I want to help show you that you can do what you love until you're dirt again. Join me next Wednesday. Have a great week. Sharita Day. If we could get more people to collaborate with our nonprofits, we could be bringing a lot more programs back to our schools because there's grants where there's been a music program or an arts program or fine language program cut. There's grants where individuals bring those programs into the schools and collaborate. So that's why I never shut up about this. C360. That stands for Collaborative 360. And that's where we've